yes that electric bicycle conversion project i know guys it's extremely delayed but the fact is that we are almost done with the mechanical part of the project and we have also built a customized battery pack that's rated for around 84 volts so now we need a speed controller that can control the speed of the bicycle but the problem is that most of the options available online are not rated for that high voltage so in today's video we are going to build an extremely powerful pulse width modulation speed controller that can help us to control the speed of our bicycle and it will be a customizable unit so that we can use it in different projects that uses large dc motors so without any further ado let's jump into the project let's suppose we have a battery pack that's connected directly to the motor through a switch. Now to control the speed of the motor, we have to limit the amount of electrical energy that is being supplied. To drive the motor at full speed, we just need to leave the switch closed, but to decrease the speed, we constantly switches the battery power at a very high speed. Now this variation in speed can be controlled by changing the on and off duration of the switch. Well, mechanical switches are not supposed to handle such high stress but an appropriate choice for such application can be an N-channel MOSFET that can handle significant amount of current at very high switching frequencies. Here I've designed the schematic for the speed controller and for sufficient power output we are going to use 4 N-channel MOSFETs and to switch them we have used a triple 5 timer IC. To change the duty cycle which is the on and off duration of the MOSFET we are going to use a 100k potentiometer. Now here comes the tricky part. We need the speed controller to handle a battery pack that's rated at 84 volts but the problem is that the triple 5 timer IC cannot be operated at 15 volts. So to regulate the desired voltage efficiently we are going to use LM5008 boost converter IC. So after going through the data sheet we have added all the complementary components to achieve the required configuration. Later I have designed the PCB layout for the whole circuit that took some time but the best thing about this whole process is that I can customize the whole speed controller according to my needs. Now as we are done with the design, we just headed up to PCBWay.com and ordered the boards. The process is simple. You just have to go through a bunch of options there and upload your Gerber files. Once they'll review your designs, the manufacturing process will just take one or two days and then hopefully you'll receive your boards within just a week. Well, PCB Bay is providing great quality services for manufacturing your customized printed circuit boards, so have a look at their website. I'll drop down all the links in the description below. So guys, finally we have received the PCBs and as you can see over here, the quality is pretty much flawless. So now what we are going to do is to gather all the components and start sorting from the smallest component. And yes, by the smallest component, I mean this much is small. Yes, this is the boost converter IC. So first of all, we are going to solder that in place along with the inductor and then we'll move towards much larger components on the PCB. So without any further ado, let's get soldering. So guys finally we are done assembling the speed controller and as you can see over here this thing went way beyond our expectations. It looks pretty cool and uh, now it's time to test this thing out.
Well guys, the speed controller is working flawlessly, but definitely the on-road performance will be tested once we'll get our ass on that bicycle. And we are just a step away from converting our bicycle into an electric one. And that video will be posted tomorrow, so stay tuned for that.